Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk about how to use Virtual ENV Wrapper. So Virtual ENV Wrapper is um, an extension to Virtual ENV that makes it easier for you to manage your virtual environments. Instead of creating one-off environments in different places like you would do in Virtual ENV, Virtual ENV Wrapper puts them all in one place and allows you to switch between them, copy them, delete them, so they're easier to work with. They're all in one place, you can switch between them easier, so if you have multiple projects, um, it's easier to uh, use a particular virtual environment. I should note that Virtual ENV Wrapper is for Unix only, that's why I'm on my Linux system right now. There are Windows versions of it, but the base version of Virtual ENV Wrapper is Unix only. So let me get started showing you how to use it. It's pretty simple. Um, the first thing I need to do is install it, of course. So I'm going to use pip and install Virtual ENV Wrapper. And I need to upgrade my version of Python, but it installed. So after I install it, I need to do just um, a couple of setup things before I can get started using it. I need to tell Virtual ENV Wrapper where I want my home directory to be that will hold all of my virtual environments. So to do this, I'll need to export a variable called work on home. So capital work on underscore home. And it's going to be wherever I want my virtual environments. So um, I'll just use ENVs in the home directory. So now that I've exported it, I need to create a directory. And I don't know if I have this already, so I'll use dash P. Um, and work on home is the variable that I'm going to use. So, so I should have the ENVs. Yes, I do. And then finally, I need to um, just source the virtual ENV script shell script so the reason why it's using unix only is because this is a bash script that i'm going to run virtual env wrapper.sh so it's in user local bin and then virtual env wrapper sh it was put there when i installed it using pip okay so now i have the virtual env wrapper set up so to use it, instead of doing virtual env and then blah for whatever I want my environment directory to be, I'll use make virtual env, so mk virtual env, and then I'll specify the name of my environment. So I'll say env1. So now it's installing it. And while I wait, I'll go to the directory that I created. And we see um, env1 is being created here. So it created it and it automatically put me into env1. So let me type the command work on. And this gives me a list of all the environments that I have. So if I did work on env1, it will switch me to env1. But I only have env1, so there's nothing to switch to because I'm already in it. So um, I have this environment set up. I could install something like Flask. So pip install. Well, I need to do sudo. So pip install Flask. Um, it's already installed virtually. Well, because it's global on my system, um, it's already installed in the environment. I can't think of anything in particular to install, but installing uh, packages once you're already in the virtual environment is straightforward. I want to focus more on virtual env wrapper. So if I wanted a different environment, I just do mk virtual env and then I can have env2 and it's going to do the same thing. It's going to install another environment. I can take a look at the directory here. We see we have env2 there. And now if I do work on we'll see two environments and it automatically put me into virtual environment two, so env2. And I can install another one, so mk virtual env, env3. And we'll see that another uh, directory was created. And if I do work on, whoops, work on, I see env1, env2, and env3. So I'm in env3 right now. If I want to switch to env1, I can just do work on and then the name of the environment, so env1. And now I'm in env1, as you can see um, on the left-hand side. So if I want to go to env2, 
can go to EMV2. Very, very simple. So, like I said, virtual EMV wrapper is great to keep all of your virtual environments in one place. Um, it takes slightly more setup than virtual ENV uh, at the beginning, but once you have it set up, it's pretty much the same using virtual ENV and virtual ENV wrapper. So it's just a preference thing. I'd say if you were um, planning to keep a virtual environment for a while, then it's better to use virtual ENV wrapper. So it's always going to be in the same place. If you need a one off virtual environment to um, experiment with something, then I would just put it uh, in its own directory that way I can just delete all the files at once but um either way works well so it's up to you um so that's all I wanted to say about virtual EMV wrapper if you have any questions about this just let me know in the comments below um if you have any requests for videos please let me know it's getting difficult to come up with um, new videos to make so let me know and I know I've been delaying uh, creating longer videos on creating actual applications. I need to get to that. It just takes a little more time um, If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe So thanks for watching this video and I will talk to you in the next video